Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic, where I try and solve your bike problems that have been pestering you and have stopped you getting out on the bike and enjoying yourself. So if you've got one, leave it for me down there in the comment section below. And also, why not try and leave me one on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. With no further ado, let's have the first question this week. And it comes in from Jason F who says they currently have a Mavic wheel set with the XDR hub that they use on a bike with SRAM Axis. Uh, they want to start using the wheel set on a winter bike which has a Shimano group set. What are the steps of doing this? Is it as easy as just replacing the cassette on the wheels to the 1130 Shimano cassette that they have? Or does Jason need to change the hub as well for it to be compatible? Do you have to use a specific wheel hub for Shimano versus Campagnolo versus SRAM group sets? They're all a bit confusing for me. Right. I'm going to answer this one and hopefully it solves all of these uh, questions you've got there. So um, you've got that SRAM 12 speed on there you say because you're using Axis. So you're using a special XDR driver on the, the body, the free hub body. So with that, if you take off your cassette, you can't put a Shimano one on there because it just doesn't fit the splines or anything. So you can't also use that wheel with your Shimano group set because that's 11 speed and you've got a 12 speed cassette on there so it's not going to work. So. Your only option here is to actually remove the free hub body and then put a new one on there. So a Shimano compatible one instead of that XD driver or not XDR driver. Um, it's fairly simple to do. In fact, I'm pretty sure the wheels you've got are probably even the tool free ones. So it's nice and easy. You don't have to unlock or undo anything whatsoever. You simply pop off an end cap and you pull off the, the free hub body, and put the other one on, put the cassette on and go and you are happy. Now your other question on there was asking about um, one which works on SRAM, Campagnolo and Shimano. I think that's what you meant by it. Uh, no, there's nothing really because uh, the latest versions of SRAM and Campagnolo are 12 speed, Shimano is 11 speed. Shimano and SRAM normal cassettes, they use the same fitting system. So it's the same sort of spline pattern. Shima uh, Campagnolo uses a deeper one. There are some hubs out there, I think it was PMP, possibly an Italian brand, who had something that worked with both types. It probably wasn't PMP, I think I just made that or imagined that, but there was definitely one out there, Miche, possibly Miche. They did something that worked with both cassettes, but uh, it wouldn't, of course, work with that SRAM 12-speed cassette because they use a very small cog on there that simply won't go onto a standard diameter free hub body. Hopefully that will see you all right, though, with those answers. Essentially, in essence, you need to get yourself a Shimano free hub body for those Mavic wheels. Right, next we've got Ron Gatenby or Gatenby who says, do you have to do anything special with your front derailleur if you want to try an oval front ring setup? Right then, Ron, thinking about going oval, are we? Nothing major to do here. Uh, what you do want to do though is rotate your cranks so that the chain ring um, is in its most overlies position, I guess, where it goes near the front derailleur. So you want it so it's um, at the high points, if you like, of those rings. You then need to adjust the front derailleur up slightly, probably, just so that it can clear it. Because uh, obviously if you don't, if you try and shift it, it's just gonna bash against the uh, inside of the chain ring and probably render the front mech useless and scratch it up, if not that. Um, so that's really all you need to worry about. Something to consider though, is when you are changing gear, it's probably not gonna be quite as silky smooth as a chain set is from the factory because generally you're asking it to jump just slightly higher. Of course, if you're using an oval inner ring as well, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of is all right, but it's not, it's never quite perfect. You know, it's like, it's almost perfect. It's just like a hair's width different. But um, yes, yeah, so you use, use your legs almost as a clutch mechanism, if you like, to so just back off the gas a little bit. So just ease off and allow the chain just to climb up and then lay down those watts again. Next up is Yaya Bali. That is a cool name, really cool name. Uh, Hi John, I was wondering for pulley wheels, do I need to lube them after cleaning my bike? I usually remove all the grime from the teeth and then dry them. I don't know if I have cartridge bearings or not. It's the original pulley wheels that came on my R8000 mech. Thank you and have a great day. Right, uh, pretty sure they are cartridge bearings in there. Either way, if they're cartridge or they use the standard ceramic bushes, I always like to give them a little bit of lube after I wash the bike. So make sure it's nice and dry. Then this is the only time I would suggest laying your bike on its side. If you've watched anything of mine before, you know there's a few things I don't like. One is noisy bikes, one is bikes upside down, the other one is uh, leaning bikes on their side, basically. You want to work on a bike when it's in its right place, but if you want to lube those pulley wheels, obviously you don't want to take them out of the mech each time because it's a bit troublesome, a bit, bit of a hassle really. So lean the bike on its side, 
get yourself some chain lube, something like that in a bottle. Uh, I prefer to use a bottle than an aerosol for this because it's just, you can control it a lot easier because aerosols obviously it blasts out and you can't sort of control that quite as easily. So get the, get the rear mech there and just apply, you know, a few drops to each one. And then with the bike back up in its natural, normal state, just backpedal a little bit. But before you backpedal, you want to allow that chain lube, you can use dry, wet, doesn't really matter, just to soak in a bit more really, so that you know all of the bearings are gonna get a nice coating there. And like I say, if you're not using a sealed bearing in there, it will find its way into the bushing too. Sealed bearings, they are sealed, obviously, that's the name of them, but generally it will just help it a little bit as well. Uh, and it could well just flush out any of the grime too. Now we've got Milos Djuric who says, hello to all at GCN. Great show, as always. Uh, the thing I see a lot of debate about on forums, right, first up, forums. They can be an absolute minefield of information. We're not gonna go down there today though. Uh, anyway, the, the, a lot of debate about replacing the chain before doing the same thing with cassettes. Many people have had skipping issues and claim that a new cassette is almost a must when you replace a chain. Does the new chain stroke old cassette combo need breaking in? Right, I'm gonna set something straight here from my own experience. I've been cycling for quite some time now. Um, no, you don't need to break it in at all, providing you've replaced your chain in time. If you've let it wear away, now chains don't stretch. People say they stretch, they don't, they wear. Okay, the two things are pretty different. I've already, I can feel the comment section below getting lit up, right, because I've just said that. Um, anyway, providing you've replaced your chain in time, it's not necessary to put a new cassette on. One of the easiest and most simplest things that everybody out there can do, and I'm gonna get on my soapbox just, just quickly, is to just wash your bikes, take real care of them. Your drivetrain, it is in the firing line of all the rubbish that comes up off the road, the salt, the grip, the sand, the dirt, everything. And when it gets inside the chain, that acts like a cutting paste on your beautiful chain rings, your expensive cassette, your pulley wheels, everything, and it starts to wear out. Get yourself some degreaser and just spray it over when your chain starts to get manky and give it a good clean and everything is gonna last way longer. Now you say this about um, cassettes need replacing. I reckon I've had cassettes that I've probably replaced the chain five times before I've needed to replace the cassette. So I've had five new chains for each cassette. That's how long they can last if you don't take really good care of it. Yeah, this one is gonna get heated down below in the comments. Go easy. Now we've got Dimitris Starikovs who says, hi there, not sure if this is tech, maintenance, other issue. You've come to the right place, whatever it is. Right, Dimitris. Uh, autumn riding comes with wet riding. Awful, isn't it? Uh, lately when riding in the wet, my wheel brake tracks, rim brakes, get covered in oily gunk, almost like the one you get on the chain. Braking performance suffers, not to mention the pain to get it off. Am I doing something incorrectly or are the roads that dirty? It's not my chain as the front wheel gets as dirty as the rear one. Right, Demetrius, perfectly normal, mate. What's happening is a combination of you braking and the water. Uh, basically, it's deteriorating your brake pads. That oily gunk is actually your brake pads wearing out. Disc brake users, they're sat right now going, <laughs> Demetrius, seriously, mate, get yourself some disc brakes. But don't worry about it, okay? Yeah, it does make a horrible mess and braking performance is probably affected slightly. I mean, at the end of the day, you're in the wet, so it's never gonna be quite as good as it sh could be. Um, but don't worry about it too much because when you brake, your brake pads, more often than not, they have little grooves in them and those grooves uh, move the water away from the rim and then they fall down. That's why if you look on your front fork, you'll quite often have bits of this horrible, like gunky mess, which is talking about that, like black, gray grime down the fork legs because it's come out and the pressure of the wheel has pushed it back and it's run down there. Same thing happens on the rear. Now that stuff is really easy to get off of the frame and forks unless you've got a matte frame. Not quite as simple. If you have got a matte frame, by the way, and you've got that uh, WD-40 bike cleaner, really good for that. Tends to get it off really well. But we're talking about your rims. Okay, um, what I use for it is nice hot soapy water and get yourself a scouring pad. It depends where you're from. It could well be called Scotch Bright, I think it's called, and use that. Now it's quite abrasive. It's the sort of thing which you'd clean uh, the bottom of your cooking pots or pans if you burn a lot of food, um, which I'm quite experienced at as well. Anyway, you'd get that and apply a decent amount of pressure, but make sure, right, you stay away from the actual sidewall of your tire because it's quite abrasive, like I said, and you could well damage that. Likewise, 
If you've got black rims or any colored rims, that sort of thing, you wanna try and stay away from that too. So try and break it off into a little bit perhaps. Just apply really small amount of pressure and just work through it. Because what happens is all that oily gunk is getting caught in the, the very small grooves on your braking surfaces normally and what happens it gets stuck in there and there's one bit where it always gets stuck and that is just at the very top lip of the rim where it meets onto the sidewall of the tyre that tends to get real messy as well so with that just use a sponge again hot water uh, try and get it as hot as possible because that tends to shift that grime now you don't want it so hot you're going to burn your hands in that case get a pair of marigolds you know rubber gloves you would do the washing up with as well so yeah, when you finish with your scouring pad, when you've cleaned out your burnt pads, you could just go straight off and wash your bike with it. I'm only joking, but that's the sort of thing you need really just to protect your hands from it because hot water makes a big, big difference with this. Importantly here, you're not doing anything wrong. It happens to everyone out there who uses rim brakes. And when it starts to wear away, your rim brakes, you get through them so quickly, those pads. I remember my dad on his commute, he used to get through in the winter, sometimes a pair every, probably every 10 days with V-brakes on his mountain bike. That's how quick they used to wear down, you know, in traffic, stop, start, stop, start. But yeah, not doing anything wrong. It just requires good old fashioned elbow grease. Right, final one this week comes in from Piano Cascade. I often wonder, and I've said it before, where do you not get your names from? Right, anyway, Piano Cascade says, will a down tube tension shifter work with a Positron Shimano rear derailleur? Right, we are stepping back in time now. About 37 years, I think. Smiley Positron, I think from 1982, 1983. So, uh, a very basic rear derailleur, I guess you could say. So it's not indexed or anything like that. A down tube shifter, which you've said, down tube tension shifter. With that, I'm not sure if you mean a friction or an indexed one because they're both under tension at some point. But I'm pretty sure it'll work absolutely fine with six, seven, eight speed, something like that. How, well, I can six and seven, definitely. Uh, how well it would work with a 10 speed down tube shifter, I don't know, because remember, it does work on a parallelogram style design, and I don't know how much movement it has um, to actually be able to play around with, but it should work absolutely fine. This is, a, this is the time, really, when I want to throw it out to the audience. Will a down tube tension shifter work with a Positron rear derailleur? I was only two years old when that product was released, so I don't have much experience. I have actually maintained one, um, and those derailleurs back then were actually designed to work for a friction shifter, but index shifters were introduced not that long after, and they still worked fine with it. And on an old bike somewhere, I think it's my mate Alice's house, I've even got one of those Positron rear mechs on there or something very, very similar, and it's got an index down tube system on there. I think it's got eight speed on there, so I reckon you'll be okay up to eight. Anything more? Well, yeah, we're treading into murky waters because I've never tried it myself. Right, there we are. I hope that answered that question. If not, someone else, Mr. Grumpy 53, Mr. Grumpy 53, a regular commenter, you will definitely be able to help that one out because you seem to know about a lot of this old stuff too. Get involved in the comment section. And like I said at the start, if you've got a bike related problem, let me know about it down there in the comment section and I will do my utmost best to try and solve it in a forthcoming episode. Right, remember as well, like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, click the little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. For two more great videos, click just down here and just down here. And don't forget, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com.